getting out of your head because you can do that so many different ways. This is Three Marketers Walk Into a Podcast, episode 56. You're listening to Three Marketers Walk Into a Podcast, brought to you by the fine folks at Response Suite. I've always had this personal problem with content marketing because you can't quite see the direction that takes somebody from like reading a blog post to being a customer. Whereas, you know, if you're doing like Facebook ads or affiliates, you know where you're driving the traffic. There's a real funnel to that. And so I've always had that that kind of problem. Hey, this is Rob and Kennedy from Response Suite. Dad, pleased to be here. Really excited to be speaking to Kim Doyle today, Mm. who's going to be telling us all about how to come up with ideas of what to be posting for your content marketing, where to get those ideas from, where to post these things, different channels, really good stuff. Because for me, I don't know about you, but I know that you should be doing content marketing. But then sometimes you open up that email or you open up your WordPress and you hit, I'm going to bang out a new post. And you just stare, sort of terrified at that blank screen, not knowing what on earth to start and where, where to start, what to write or anything like that. So it's tricky, isn't it? There's some real strategy here as well in terms of moving people from content to email and email to sales. And Kim's going to talk about that as well. So it's, very. It's, I think it's going to be a great episode, but yeah. you've, had, you've had a busy weekend, haven't you? I have. We've been off. I uh, went over to see Rachel Meyer, the half's horse, Domino. Domino the horse. Because he's, the main he's black Domino and white, himself. obviously. Yeah. Are, are you letting him ride then? Is that what's going on? No. No, what? Absolutely not. It is on my radar of things to do. But I said, Could I, can you just get on the horse and just like have it walk you around instead of all that jumping and leaping and things? Because I'm not answer? sure I'm into the jumping and leaping. Is the answer yes? I mean, yes, but like it's a bit pointless. Uh, okay. okay. I'd, I'd love to ride a horse. Emma, my other half, she has been riding horses and teaching riding horses for years, uh, but I'm allergic to them. I think they're such beautiful animals, but I can only enjoy them from afar. Mm. So well, if they to- throw you off far enough. Then you'll be fine. Uh, then I'll be all right. But otherwise, I'll just have like really blotchy eyes and stuff. Anyway, before we get in, into any further of this, I'd love to hear your quote of the week. So here is Rob's quote of the week. Yes, because as they say, when failure is not an option, ride the road less ordinary. Oh, just, just really, really digs deep that, doesn't it? You're welcome. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful, that. One of the things we've been really helping people out with is to get better results from their email marketing. We know that a lot of people understand that moving people from borrowed turf, a, a social media platform, onto your email marketing list is obviously a really good thing to do because you own that data. But getting better results from that email marketing is obviously very, very important. Hmm. So we've been, we've been doing email marketing for how long? 15 years, probably more yeah, than each. Yeah. yeah. So like a combined total of like 30 years. And we've, we've used a lot of campaigns, a lot of different strategies to be able to make that happen. And we've put together a really cool special training. It's like a 60 to 90 minute training, just over an hour's training yeah. about how to get like massive results from your email marketing using some really cutting edge techniques. Yeah. So it's a really great online webinar. Uh, you can actually go and register for it this week. You'll be able to go and watch the training and you'll be able to learn all this amazing stuff. And actually you leave it with a really great campaign that you can go and implement inside your business and start getting better results from your email. And by away. results, we mean actual sales, not like people saying, oh, I like your emails. We're talking about making sales from email. Yeah. All you need to do to go and register for that, it's totally free to attend this class. We'll be there with you. And that is over at responsesuite.com forward slash webinar. So go to responsesuite.com forward slash webinar. Come and join us and we'll share all of that stuff with you. Well, that's quite enough of that chat. We should probably speak to Kim Doyle. Great news. Kim Doyle is on the show. Kim, how are you doing? (laughs) I'm great. You guys are super fun to start my day with. So thanks. Do you know what I mean? We, We hear that a lot. (laughs) (laughs) maybe you should leave that one alone (laughs) yeah so moving swiftly on uh this has been a lovely episode and goodbye Uh, um so lovely career hasn't it we'll say goodbye now we're excited to chat to you about email marketing we're huge fans of email marketing here at three marketers walk into a podcast and uh, one of the big questions i think lots of people have or one of the big i guess objections is how many times can we email our list how often can we do it and lots of people especially when they start out kind of terrified of emailing their list too much for unsubscribes and all of that stuff. So what is your process for email marketing, Kim? Tell us. Well, I have to be super honest. I kind of call it the almost daily email now, but it was, uh, I have to, I'm just going to do a quick little story, but I backed into this because I'm a Ben Settle fan. I've been a customer of his and I watched what he did for, I don't know, probably a year before I became a customer. And then I just decided screw it. I'm, I'm not doing great with email now. I'm going to master this craft. And that's how I approached it. So I think the process for me 
is I just kind of got fed up with the BS. And I'm like, I just need to be me. I'm going to show up. I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to test this. And so I just started telling stories and kind of that single, simple, clean email of a story with a little bit of a twist and then one single call to action. And it was crickets for the first month I did it. And I had people unsubscribing. But you know, it took, I don't know, less than three months and I tripled a sales for an affiliate product. And I'm not an affiliate marketer, right? I do content marketing for stuff I like. And it just, but it blew my mind how this all worked. So my process for email, it, it tends to really be, what do I feel like sharing that's relevant? That has a good call to action that's going to serve the audience. Okay. So you're saying you're following this idea of doing like almost like a daily email. But I think for me, the question is, do they know that's what they're opting into? So for example, one of the things, I mean, I do the daily email thing as well. So I'm, a, I'm totally on the same page as you. So my list, they are subscribing to receive emails from me every single day with knockout information that's going to help them. That's what they're signing up for. That is your lead magnet. That is my lead magnet. It's like, get, get, get on this because you're going to really want this. Whereas I know some other people are doing the whole normal lead magnet, opt in for this one thing. And then you surprise them, I suppose, with email them every single day. Which one are you doing? Uh, I'm doing the lead magnet, to be honest with you. And mm -hmm. it, it's funny because when you just told me that, I was like, damn, that's kind of brilliant. Because I think lead magnets, we've, we've hit this place where I think the market's matured. People are probably sick of me saying that. Um, but there's like a like banner blindness. There's like mm -hmm. lead magnet blindness, right? Like it's like, okay, another thing that's going to sit on my hard drive. I really love that. And I hope you don't mind. I'm probably going to bogart it. But <laughs> it's, it's fascinating to me because as I started doing that, I got I get way more responses to my emails now than I ever did in the past versus, you know, like the newsletter style. I don't, I don't think doing a newsletter, like a recap at the end of the week is bad, but you have to be communicating in between. And, you know, so I, I, I like what you're doing better, but that's not how I approached it. I just did the lead magnet and then stay in touch. Okay. So they, they, they download the lead magnet. Do you intro the fact that, Hey, thanks for downloading that, that lead magnet, that thing that you wanted to get that valuable thing. And then say, I'm going to keep in touch with you every single day. Do you forewarn them? Do you foreshadow that? Or does it just, are they now in the broadcast? They're now in the broadcast, but I talk in my emails about my almost daily email all the time. Like, and the only reason I'm saying almost daily email, it's just, you know, business is pivot and I've been through a ton of transitions, but it really, I, I joke around that there's the three best things I've done for my business and the emails is one of them, daily emails. So, um, you know, it's, it's, I think it needs to be said probably <laughs> from my perspective. Fortunately, a lot of people are, are in my world, whether they're my Facebook group and my list and whatever, but um, I talk about it a lot. So it works. I don't know. It works. That's really, really interesting. I know a lot of people who do the daily email thing. One of the th one of the sort of elements of their business, and this includes you, in fact, Kennedy, mm -hmm. is that you kind of have one core product that you want to sell most of the time. So yeah. in your case, that's the membership site. In a lot of people's case, that's the membership site. What's your model here, Kim? I know you mentioned an affiliate offer there. Do you have like one core thing that you pretty much mail all the time and occasionally you do something else? Or is it a case of, well, this week I'm promoting this and I'm going to do the daily emails to support that. And then next week I'm going to be doing the daily emails to support another the product. What's your model in terms of where you're actually sending them as a call to action? Well, I do now. Okay. So when I started this, like my brand, my previous brand was a WordPress chick and I was really trying to transition out of this, how to do this with WordPress and how to do that. So I was transitioning out of it. That's where it was kind of affiliate stuff because I had service business and I, I don't do any of that anymore. So now <clears throat> because I have a physical product that supports everything I do with content marketing, that's always going to be the end goal. <clears throat> Sorry, spring is coming, allergies. So that's always going to be the end goal. I don't necessarily, you know, uh, put a call to action in the in the email every day for the planner, but it's always going to be relevant to, I, I remind people all the time to join my Facebook group. I send them to a piece of content. It's all complimentary. And the end goal always is going to be that sale. So for people like us then who are pretty much mailing, so me and Kennedy are mailing the same thing pretty much every day to a lot of, uh, a lot of people who haven't tried this before, that might sound terrifying. The idea that you could mail your list all the time, or in your case, just regularly about that same thing, that planet, like what would you say to those people to just help them over just that idea that, oh, you know, like, oh, but other people are not going to get pissed off with me because I'm just telling them the same thing every day. Ha ha like just I mean, we're already converted, but just reconvince us that absolutely it's okay to just mail your list all the time and it's okay to just keep driving people into the same thing. 
Well, the first thing I would tell people is to baby step your way into it. I, I did. I, I mean, I, I went from <laughs> once or twice a month to, all right, I'm going to at least hit this five days a week. And then there are times it was seven days a week, but you baby step into it. And I, and maybe this is selfish, but I approach it from a, I'm going to get better at this craft because I needed to get out of my head. I needed to get out of this end result. And I, it depends on where you're at in your marketing journey, to be honest with you, because you get to a point where you're like, well, I don't care. You know, I'm going to provide value. If you don't like it, you weren't going to buy it from anyway. So somewhere along the line, I think we all make that transition. But if someone's afraid of, of being that person, look at what you pay attention to in your own inbox. The people that write quality content, I always open it and I save a ton or I go back and I mark it as unread because I want to read that email. So you have to focus on what you're providing and why you're doing it and let the rest work itself out. You can overthink things 10 ways sideways in this business. And it's like, screw it, you know, just provide value, connect, and you will be remembered. It's the people that, how many times, I, let me ask you guys, how many times you get an email and you're like, okay, I, I know, I, I have no idea who you are or what you're doing because you haven't yeah. heard from someone, mm -hmm. you know? So, and then people wonder why did nobody buy my offer? Because they have no idea who you are. And so it almost, it's funny because I tell you guys a little story. I hopped on a call with somebody that's been on my list Literally, I started the word press chick like in 2008, right? She's been following me forever. And it was just one of those that I said, well, let's hop on a Skype call sometime or a Zoom call. And so we did. And she's like, God, I, you know, I feel so guilty. Like I haven't bought anything from you yet, but she loves what I do. So then I did a, a course and sure enough, she was one of the first people to buy. And it was so funny, but you have to be in this for the long game. So email, it's not going anywhere and it's communication. It's just a reminder. So I think getting out of your head because you can do that so many different ways, um, baby step your way into it. And if your intention is look, I've got something to share that's of value. And there can also be connection emails, right? Like I, I believe in the selling every day, but if you don't have that, I've shared a Medium article that I found super valuable that struck a chord within me. And then I wrote a post about it and I'm like, you know, and, and I just shared it with my audience and I get responses to those emails too. Be, so you have to find what works for you, but you have to do it. You're going to not feel comfortable until you're comfortable. Get used to it. One of the words you just said, a lot, said there a lot was value. And people talk a lot about, you've got to provide value. You've got to, and in terms of emails, how do you provide that value? What types of value are there? So for example, do you need to show somebody the, the whole answer, everything about them, about that subject matter within that email? What, what kinds of value are there? There's tons. So first of all, I know it's, it's kind of trite. It's overused, right? At the same time, you cannot necessarily teach and give away everything you do every day, right? right? And, and so there comes this point where we are in this phase of what makes you different. And truly, Dr. Seuss, no one is you than you. Like you are the only differentiating factor in your business for, for what that's worth, right? And some of my best, most highly responsive emails, which by the way, I publish as blog posts a lot if it's relevant, mm -hmm. right? But some of my most engaged emails back, opens, whatever, have nothing to do with like the subject line. Literally, I'm going to give you guys two quick examples. One was the subject line said, I literally fell down the stairs because <laughs> I went to walk the dogs and God forbid, I wait till I get to the bottom of the stairs to find the podcast I'm going to listen to. So I'm looking at my phone and I fell down the stairs. Uh -huh. I was totally fine. I broke my glasses. I was kind of pissed. But so I thought about like how many times do we do that in our business that we don't pay attention to where we're going with what's right in front of us. And we're so good, right? I was concerned about what's going to be happening in 10 minutes. And I just told that story and I pivoted it. I honestly don't remember the call to action. First of all, I had tons of people saying, are you okay? Oh my God. Mm -hmm. And, but I, I wrote it in a way that was funny, like saying to myself, oh my God, this isn't going to end well. Right. I knew that going down. And so, so that was just a connection piece, right? I'm not afraid to say, look, you guys, I struggle. I have ups and downs, all of that. And then another one was this, and it was a Sunday, you guys, and this blew me away. Not to get into the story. I was widowed in 2003. My kids were super little and I woke up on the anniversary of my husband's passing like 12 years. It's been what, 16 years now. Right. So this was just like two years ago. It was a Sunday and it hit me a few hours into the day that I hadn't thought about it. And for me, that was a big win. Like we've totally gotten the other side of this. Of course, it was horrific and all of that, but it made me realize, wow, like you can get through this. Your dreams are worth pursuing and stuff. And so I sent an email on a Sunday that said, in loving memory and a personal message of hope. That was it. There was zero call to action, you guys. I got like 30 responses within a couple hours. Then I posted that on the blog post. To date, it is the highest shared post I've ever written. I had so many people commenting, wow, I didn't know that, which 
ties in the story piece, right? We think, oh, it's on my about page or people know your story, but they don't. No. And it was simply something that I felt in my gut. I'm going to share this and talk about it. And it, it, was, it was really from a good place. It wasn't a woe is me. And it, it blew up. So I, I think this idea of what to share and what stories to tell, just do what you got to do. You're going to find your way. You don't, nobody starts writing or starts doing emails with this master idea. You know, like I watch, again, I use Ben Settle. He talks about movies and villains and all this stuff all the time. And I think, God, that was great, you know? And, and so he's given me almost permission. When you watch how other people are doing things, you just have to practice it. I went 12 ways sideways. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not at all. But one of the things you talked about there, Kim, is, is the idea of like, of sharing a bit of you. We are obsessed these days as a culture with reality television. We don't just want to know how good a singer that person is on, on, on America's Got Talent or whatever the show might be. We want to know their background. They spend most of that show telling us the story behind the person. And the reason that we're, that we're willing to call up that premium rate phone number to place our vote or to text that premium rate text line to place that vote is not because that person's necessarily the best singer or the best performer in the world, but because we're investing in the person. So you're doing that through your emails, aren't you? Absolutely. And there's just, there is simply this connection, right? I mean, I think there's always going to be gurus in this space, whatever, but I think we're past that point. And I don't know if you guys have noticed this, right? And I'm not going to give names, but I've been in this space for 11 years now. And so there was all these big gurus and stuff and you see them now trying to vlog or do the behind the scenes. And it's not natural for them because they've built up this persona of I'm here and you're there. And it's, it's kind of funny. So to me, there is this golden opportunity for anybody who is willing to just show up T t tell your story, talk about what you're doing. Talk That's it. I mean, none of this is difficult, but to your point, Kennedy, I think that was Kennedy, right? It was, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We okay. all sound but, the same. <laughs> no. Okay, now, but, but to your point, I, I think it's that sort of psychology behind the scenes. That's the work that a lot of people don't want to do in this space either. But when you pay attention to what you're doing and what worked and what didn't work, and it's like, wow, these little stories that connect people and make you think, oh, I like you or I don't like you, whatever that is, right? Mm -hmm. But that's what gets people interested in staying on your email list and looking forward to the next open. I get a ton of people that are just like, I love your emails. And <laughs> that, that's it. And I'm like, well, thanks, you know? But, but it's, it's that connection piece. And that's where we have a great opportunity right now. And email does that. What would you say to somebody who says, well, yeah, but Kim, you're really fun or you're funny, or at least you've had some events happening in your life, which are interesting and some of them all, albeit tragic and awful and for you to have gone through. And we're sorry to hear about that, but you've had some life events. And then a lot of people think, well, I don't really do anything. Like I'm, I'm really boring. And nobody wants to hear about that. I'm not funny. Whereas, I mean, I hear that a lot. So, so my, my emails are fairly humorous. And people say to me, well, I can't possibly do that because I'm not funny. I mean, does it have to be funny? No. Well, and here's the thing. <laughs> I, it's I probably still on my site, but somebody should go back and read the first post I ever wrote on the WordPress chick. It's like a robot. It's like a paragraph. It's horrible. And it was like trying to, it was, I don't know. It reminds me of like Microsoft circa 1995 or something. I'm like, what is this? And so that idea, that's the whole point, right? You can't be me. You can't be Kennedy or Rob. It's like, you have to be yourself. And so trusting that, like, you know, what's funny. I started podcasting because I was just done I'm like, I got to be myself. And I'm a huge, like I listened to cassette tapes back in the car. I'm, I'm totally dating myself way back when, but I love audio. And so I was, I was like, screw it. I need to have more fun doing this. And that's what drives me. I need to have fun. I need to love what I'm doing. So you have to get clear. It's that self-awareness piece. Gary Vee preaches that all the time, but get clear. Don't try to be somebody else. And the truth is <laughs> you're not going to be hit with trolls. You're not going to be slammed or whatever, because most people are too busy paying attention to themselves. You know, I pulled back, not pulled back, but I held back even from doing a ton of video. Like, oh my God, I got to get ready or I'm not happy with the way I look or what. And it's like, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Mm. Um, I want to just interrupt things a second just while we're on, the, on that vein. And I want to talk to you about something that's slightly, slightly off topic for a second. I want to talk about your cartoon voice because we're talking <laughs> about the voice. We are talking about the voice you have in your emails. And that just made me think, ha, ah, this cartoon voice of yours. Can, can, can you say something like, Rob, you're much less talented than Kennedy, but in your cartoon voice, please. Okay. Um, Rob, we're much less... Wait, what was the sentence? Now you threw me off. We're much less talented than Kennedy, Rob. 
<laughs> love it. I love well, it. it's it's kind of that like you know you think of the chipmunks. <laughs> How did you, you find out you could do this? I, I wish I could tell you. I don't know. It went way back, and then it's morphed into like I totally talk as my dogs, like in their voice back. To, it, I just answer <laughs> for them. I don't know where this came from, honestly. I you know as a kid I was kind of into performing. I was a speech major for a while. I just you know, life's too short. You got to have fun. <laughs> well, we, we thought what we do every single episode, as you know, we, we come up with a brand new game for each one of our guests. And this week for you, we've come up with a bunch of different famous cartoon characters that Rob's going to try and describe to you. The only thing he's not allowed to do is say any component of that character's name. And Son of a nutcracker, a- this sounds hard. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> I think we have 20 of them, I think. No, we've got 10. That's pretty good. We've got 10. Let's see how many of these you can get at speed. Go. Okay, this fella is an animal. He is gray, has long ears, and eats carrots. Bugs Bunny. Yep. Uh, This guy is yellow, uh, is married to uh, another yellow person, has two yellow kids. Uh, They are uh, blue hair. There we go. Uh, this is a, a really famous little rodent created by Walt Disney. Um, Mickey Mouse. Not, that's the one. Uh, okay, this is uh, Snoopy's friend. Uh, Snoopy's uh, friend. Woodstock. Uh, no, he is. His surname is a color. It's not black. It's uh, well, it's a different color. It's uh, Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown. There we go. <laughs> uh, this is uh, Shaggy's friend. He is a dog and is. Uh, Brown with Patsy Scooby Doo. There we go. Uh, married to Wilma. Friends with Barney Rubble. Fred Flintstone. There we go. Uh, hates Christmas is green. <laughs> the Grinch. There we go. Um, for, uh, married to Olive. Uh, arch, em- arch nemesis of Bluto. Uh, eats lots of spinach. Popeye. <laughs> there we go. Uh, this is, uh, oh, um, he's always chasing after Roadrunner. In those cartoons. Wiley Coyote. There we go. And uh, goes to a school in South Park uh, and is always being told off for being overweight. <laughs> is that Cameron? Is... Oh, I don't, you know what? Very I don't close. watch. The... Very good. Very close. We'll oh. give you nine out of ten. We'll take your first answer. Okay. okay. Nine out of ten. That's Eric Cartman. That was Eric Cartman. Eric Cartman. You okay, did very Cartman. well. You know your cartoons, don't you? <laughs> It sounds like all I do is watch TV. I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> and try and do the voices. We were talking about, let's get back on the topic because we want to, I want to talk about those narratives and how we sort of weave in those things in. So you, you might be sort of telling the story and that might be a, 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 a tragic story. It might be a, a current story about you unfortunately falling down the stairs while looking at your phone. Uh, it might be something hilarious that happened. How do you then figure out that transition into making that offer? I wish there was a great science for this. Yeah. It's much easier for me to think about what I want to share and what I want to talk about. And then so I- So is that the order you do this in, Kim? Is it like, is it, yep. you come up with that, I'm going to come up with the story first and then do you even start writing it before even knowing where this is headed? Yeah, yeah. And that's just my okay. process. And it was a practice. And it was, it was really, I made a very conscious decision. Like you guys, I've done the high ticket masterminds. I've done all that. And I believe in some of it at the same time. I hit a point where I was like, you better master the fundamentals. You hear it over and over, right? So for me, when I started doing this, I thought I'm simply going to get better at writing. I want to master this craft. And so I really made a point of enjoying that time to do it. So I approach it of, okay, what, what, what do I like? What's entertaining? And side note, I had a great interview uh, that I did with a gal named Michelle Hunter. She runs Michelle Hunter Creative. She broke this down in the easiest way. We totally overthink storytelling. You know, how would you recommend a movie to somebody, right? Like, do you guys know how many people I convinced to go see The Greatest Showman? Because I freaking <laughs> loved it and saw it like three times in the theater. Yeah. So it's like my enthusiasm and excitement for it and, and telling people how they're going to feel when they leave. That's just storytelling. We totally, we tell stories in our lives all the time. So I approach it from the perspective of, Okay, and what's the hook? And that's a total Russell Brunson thing, but I've really gotten in this hook story offer. Like, how do you how do you tie this together? And it's simply a process. Nobody is going to be good at this out of the gate. It's really not. So you got to get over that if you're in this for the long game, which I hope you are. But it's it's what is something fun that I could share? What is something? And sometimes it's boring, you guys. Like I had to make a commitment publicly that I'm not going to talk about the weather as a as an opener. <laughs> It was like, I was like, this is ridiculous, Kim. Please tell me you're more creative than this. So you, you think about just experiences. And you guys, when you were talking earlier about your lives, like someone said, I just want to come hang out with you for a day. And I'm like, it's really boring. Like you see my <laughs> office, my kids are 18 and 22. They're living there. Like, 
me and my dogs go down and get more coffee. They will go for a walk. It's like, it's not that exciting. Right. And, and so it's telling and talking like you do to people every day. So, you know, for me, I, I come up with what would be fun or what would be engaging and, you know, what ties it in. And that stuff is everywhere. You guys, you can pick a song you keep listening to on loop, a movie. Why are you listening to it? What TV shows? I mean, we've got binge TV, right? Like how many things can you pull in from a character in something you're watching? Captain Marvel. Like you guys, I am so excited and sad for Avengers Endgame. Like, I don't want this chapter of my life to end, right? But, so it's like, how many things do we deal with that in our business where it's like, you're super excited, but at the same time, you know, it's it's turning a chapter. So all of those things are just stories. So then picking the end goal, it, it, it kind of happens organically for me. And it, and it tends to be something simple as, you know, you know, speaking of mastery, da, 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 or, or I pull in something from the character. And you guys, I literally, I watched and read Ben Settle and he turns a ton of people off. I get that. Find somebody else. But I watched how he did it for a year. And I was like, well, I'm not going to be him. I can't use his voice. I'm not going to, you know, speak in that tone out. It's just, it's not me. But it, I, I really paid attention and I practice it. So you have to find what works for you and you're not going to know until you start doing the work. You get and clarity. Maybe, maybe doing. one of the angles is if you turn up that day and you realize you've got nothing to talk about, that's the angle. Yes. Yes. I've done it too. Like the absence of an angle is the angle. Like this morning I got up, I brushed my teeth and now nothing's happening. I'm staring at a computer screen. Have you ever had a situation where you don't know what to say? Great. I've got a copywriting course. It's going to help you out with this. Click the button below. Yes. (laughs) I mean, stop to think about how many places you're engaged in online, whether a podcast, right? I listened to this podcast and this is what they were sharing yesterday. Mm -hmm. Or I mean, it just Facebook, I mean, social media is like, a, a plethora of ideas yeah. and you pick and, and you pick and choose, right? Like I just, I'm not somebody that does a ton of public bitching or complaining. It's not my MO, but I'll do a rant every now and then. And I, you know, so it's very easy. Once you start opening it up, I have a hashtag, everything is content. Mm-hmm. And you'll realize as soon as you start practicing this and get out of your head that this is supposed to be something you were taught in 10th grade English, that it's got to be a five paragraph essay format with an open, it, it, don't overthink it. Just don't no. overthink it. No. People are tired of that type of content. I'm really interested to dive deeper into your process for this because everyone who does this is going to be different. They're going to start in different ways. Interestingly, just on that idea of of ideas are everywhere and you should never run out of ideas. If nothing particularly interesting has happened or does happen to you, like interesting things are happening in the world that you see. So you can always comment on those. Now I'm intrigued. We've sort of talked about your process. Within within rules maybe, because for example, I I don't talk about religion or politics or those kind of things. You you said about the weather, you don't have anything about that. For example, you might see an advert on a billboard and think, sure. oh, that was really cool. There's a lesson I can pull out mm. of that and share in that mm. sense yeah, or yeah. something along those lines. So that's really cool. Now, uh, moving a little deeper into that sort of process, I'm just intrigued to get your sort of order of business, if you like. So you, you kind of have an idea and you know where you want to push them and what the call to action is, if there's going to be one. In terms of the actual process then, do you sit down and say, okay, great, I'm going to write a funny subject line or an interesting subject line or a curious, curiosity-driven subject line and that's going to then drive the body copy of the email? Or do you like write the email and get it finished and polished and then say, okay, great, now, how do I get people to open this? Just, I'm intrigued to see which way around you do that. Like, in terms of- you know what? It, it, <clears throat> I do both. If, cause sometimes a headline will come to me, you guys, I, I'll put notes in my phone when I'm out and about because something funny will just come to me. Here's a great example. I was <laughs> talking to my daughters, uh, visiting from college. We were talking yesterday and we were talking about her ex-boyfriend. I'm like, well, he was a crash course in clarity, right? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, that's totally how I'm going to define this relationship now. And I thought, damn, that's good. Like mm. most failures in business are a crash course in clarity. And so it, and it's, and I'm, I'm not here to repeat the self-help gurus of, you know, 60, 70 years of mm. everything we learn from mistakes. We all do. We all get that, but it's, it's, it's how you position it. Right. So then I would take that. If that's going to be a subject line, I would take that and, and tell the story of having this conversation with my daughter and then how I realized it. And then I would pivot to, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I share publicly. You guys, I had a SaaS that I spent a year and a half working on. It opened. The developer decided he want to do it. Two months later, we shut it down. Moving on. Ran a mm. Kickstarter. That didn't work. It's like, but we pre-sold. It, it was a, but it was a failed Kickstarter, successful product. So uh, like people are very, uh, you know, used to me telling those types of stories. But in the crash course in clarity, I would simply say how each of those things brought me closer. And then the, our planner is on uh, content strategy. So how much clearer can you get when you've got a plan to create a strategy, right? So there's an email. 
Mm. So you know that 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 sort of everything everything is content, as you said. Yep. Actually, yeah. Hence, hence the hashtag. How long should these emails be? I think they need to be as long as you need them to be to tell the story. Honestly, I easily do 700 word emails. And those are the ones that I publish as a post. It depends on if they're, you know, and I literally have a category that says daily email. I mean, I don't, it doesn't make a difference to me. I'm not doing it for SEO, but you better believe I then go share that, that, that post socially and it drives traffic, you know? So I, I think it needs to be as long as it needs to be to do it correctly. And you get better at that, right? There are times where I'm like, this is wordy, Kim, you need to tie this in because of the way I talk. <laughs> and I, I, I do fillers automatically just I write it out. And that's just my writing process. So, you know, I think if you're thinking about the person reading it and does this deliver the message? Am I making this clear? Is this it evoke some emotion in somebody? Did I make somebody smile? Like, you know, you guys, all of my content, I look at it. I have this sort of core content strategy that I want people to feel better for having engaged with me, whether they listen, read, watch, whatever I want. You may learn something. You may be entertained. You may go, I totally agree with you. Something may resonate with you, but I want you to feel better for having come into my space. Yeah. And, and you're so absolutely so awesome at that. And when you're posting these, these posts on your blog, just a quick detail question from me, just my little detailed brain sort of tickling over it now, which is, do you leave, if there was, if there was a pitch, if there is a CTA, a call to action in the email, do you keep the same call to action in the post or do you just strip that out and not include the sort of pitch element? It depends on what it is. Most of the time I leave it, but oftentimes, so is it like that, you know, I will email for a, a podcast episode that's been published. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, if it's kind of redundant in the fact that it's talking a lot about what we talk about in the show notes, mm -hmm. I tend not to, otherwise I have to rewrite it. Um, but otherwise, yeah, because it's a link to, it's an internal link that's going to also help me from an SEO perspective. Absolutely. I leave the call to action in, but if it's a time sensitive for a webinar or a promotion or something that is going to be ending, I don't. And I tend not to publish those in, in, at all then because the purpose oh. of the email was for that call to action. Okay. So it depends on that intention. Very cool. Now I want to rudely interrupt proceedings here to play the second, rude. To play the second <laughs> game of the podcast. So here's how it works. My colleague Kennedy here. Hello. That's him. He's going to sing a song for you now, Kim. Your job, Kim, and dear listener at home is simply to, oh, he's, but he's going to sing it in the style of a traditional British pub or club singer. Yeah, he's just, <laughs> just which, real which doozy. Of, which Here means that some of the words may be somewhat confused or disguised. Your job, Kim, and dear listener at home, is simply to guess what song Kennedy sings. <laughs> Kim, Kim's no idea. That's one of the worst you've ever done. Well, I, I couldn't do any better. Have you seen what you've given me? <laughs> that was the crazy <laughs> frog theme tune. <laughs> it wasn't really. Any idea, well, Kim? I, any idea at all? No, no, no. Like I'm completely stumped, and I'm usually pretty good at this stuff. <laughs> Okay, so how on earth would you have done... Rob, you can have a go at this. I'm absolutely you on not the spot. Come on. I want you to know how you would have done Son of a Preacher Man. <laughs> yeah, just differently. That's all you need to know. Different. Just differently. That's all you need different. To know. Not that way. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get back on topic. One final big question for you here on this email marketing, this daily emails thing. Come on, let's help, give, give, give us a bit of a clue. What would you say are your top like three or four angles that you've ever had that are for, you know... Uh, impactful story-based emails that drive to a call to action? Self-deprecating humor. I tend to use that a lot <clears throat> because I don't take myself that seriously. At the same time, you want to be careful on using that so that it's not giving people permission to jump on a weird bandwagon. But self-deprecating... Oh, let's try that again. Self-deprecating humor. <laughs> um, and then the heartfelt stuff of uh, this sucked and I failed and it choked, but... I'm okay. I tend to tell those stories when I'm on the other side of it because I just have enough life experience to know that that's going to be of more value to my audience than a woe is me story. So those two tend to be, so it's a humor or a heartfelt or, and actually the third one is a rant. Like people freaking love my rants mm -hmm. because I, I don't, I don't know if I can swear. I'm not going to be super rude, but I'm never a dick, right? Like yes, yeah. I don't believe in that nonsense. So, and I think it's a cop out to be honest with you, but so it's those three, like a, a rant, a heartfelt story um, and humor. I love those. I love those so much there. 
to actually get started with doing these and just looking at the world around you and making these daily, regular emails have an impact, build those deeper relationships. I'm absolutely loving it. Now we're going to jump over into what we lovingly refer to as the quick fire round. Hey, hey, you don't want to miss out on more of these fabulous nuggets, do you? Make sure you subscribe to the Three Marketers Podcast now on your podcast player. Kim, give us a book you recommend. All Day Long, The Obstacles Away by Ryan Holiday. I read that once a year and I think every single person on the planet should read it. Excellent. What's your top success habit? Something that you do regularly? Uh, meditate. Love that. What, name an entrepreneur who you look up to. Uh, my friend Trey Llewellyn. Don't know if you guys know him. Um, he has to date the highest selling funnel for click funnels. Trey and I met in a mastermind, God, five years ago. His nickname is Mr. On It. And he, he just goes for it. And he is like the epitome of positivity. <laughs> Very cool. What are your favorite apps that you think are super cool right now? I'm, I wasn't sure if you meant web apps or phone apps. You're getting web apps from me. Um, I found WriteMapper lately. I've never been a... Um, Oh my God. Like I'm more of an outliner than I am, you know, doing mind maps and whatnot, but right mapper is gold. It's kind of like a, a mind mapper, but it opens up the text windows. So if I want to do to outline a course or I do a long form piece of content and it looks good, I'm such a dork about good UI. Um, but I love right mapper. I use Snappa Canva. Have you guys seen the updates to Canva? Like you literally, Oh my God, it's blown my mind. Um, you know, so yeah, yeah. And then like, I like ManyChat too. Their UI, mm. I've tried so many different uh, chat apps and mm. their UI, like they had me at hello. Yeah, I love it. You're so enthusiastic and infectious. So who do you like more, redhead Rob or platinum head Kennedy? I can't pick, you guys. It's, I'm a recovering Catholic. I love you both. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Kim, most importantly, where can people go to find out more about you? Uh, KimDoyle.com and it's D O Y A L. <laughs> Love it. We'll link to that and everything else, all the things you talked about, all the apps and more enthusiasm in the show notes, which Grace will be putting together for you. And we'll give you the full details of that in just a moment's time. Thank you so much, Kim. It's been lovely catching up with you. You too. Thank you so much for having me, guys. This has been a blast. What a lush lady. Just one of the nicest of people. Just great and just I, really good fun. I laughed so hard during that. I yeah. laughed so hard. We have her content marketing planner. It's beautiful. Uh, and it's absolutely stunning. Really good. Can't recommend that. It's enough. almost so nice you don't want to write in it, but you absolutely have to because it, it's it, really good. It's so like detailed and absolutely amazing. And it's no wonder that Kim obviously sees in her mind's eye exactly how this content thing works. Because she, I think her, I think that planner is just a map of what's inside her head. And it drives a real strategy. You, you get to set out your objectives and all the things you want to do. So I couldn't recommend that highly enough. Absolutely amazing. One of the, another absolutely amazing episode. If you missed any of that, I know Kim shared absolutely tons in it. Please pop over, take a look at the show notes. You'll find them over at responsesuite.com slash 056. Now, if you haven't already, and we do know who you are, please do go and leave us a review. I know we ask this every time and it does really, really help us to get this amazing content in front of more more people. So if you've been a listening for a while or a brand new listener, just pop over to iTunes if you want to do that at responsesweet.com forward slash iTunes, or you can go and find it on your favorite podcast player. We want to do a massive big shout out to all our new listeners. Hello, welcome aboard. Make sure you subscribe. And of course, leave us a comment. We'll give you a shout out in a coming episode. That's it. We'll see you next week. Bye for now. Don't miss a thing. Miss a thing. Check out the show notes at blog.responsesweet.com.